This is my uncle Rob, and we are here at Qualified Rapid Products, uh, which is uh, his company, to learn about metal 3D printing. That is incredible. So there's two of those flying on the International Space Station right now. You have parts on the ISS. Uh -huh. How does that feel? It feels really good. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that's cool. I am holding something, the form of which is in space. Awesome. Okay, so this is the metal cardboard? Yeah. Okay, so this, this weighs very little. This weighs maybe two to three times as much as, no, maybe twice as much as a piece of cardboard of a similar size. Uh, I don't know. You know, I mean, you can get higher strength to weight ratio than carbon fibers or anything else just because you can... Play with the structure. But, yeah, I mean, you'll see see here, you can tell the lattice is dense in some areas and lighter in others, and the skin is thicker in some areas than others. That's on purpose. It's amazing. And that's far more precise than you could get casting. I'm assuming. Oh, yeah. Or, okay. Oh, yeah. So here I can print features that are ten thousandths of an inch diameter. Well, casting, you've got to be about eighty thousandths. And then for 80,000, how much are you paying for the mold? It depends on what type of casting you're doing. Anywhere from a couple thousand to 30,000 or something like that. You know. So this just gives you all kinds of flexibility with yeah. geometry. Yeah. Man, that's cool. This is a part we're doing for the automotive industry. You can look in there and see it going. Oh, wait, was that the blade? That was the new powder. Yeah, so here it's putting a thin layer of powder on. You can see it going on. And here the laser is welding. This is... Do they make a noise? Nope. And then this, this glass is like welding glass? So this, you know, this turns it into a class one laser by the time, you know, so it's not hurting your eyes looking through that glass. Awesome. So basically, this is a welding chamber. You've got argon in there. You've got a thin layer of metal powder. And then you've got a laser coming in and welding that top layer of all the things that you need. So how, did, how does that happen in the layer? So this metal, I assume, is going down? Yeah, so the, the build chamber drops across the dose chamber when the raw powder lifts, and then a recorder blade brings a nice thin controlled layer on top. How, how thin can you put those layers? So about six ten thousandths. Six ten thousandths, yeah. Wow. So this, this cross section has been centered with the laser, and the laser must have been the water I just let it go. Yeah. Now it's actually not centering, it's welding. Welding. So 30 years ago, they used CO2 lasers, there wasn't quite enough energy to melt it all the way. Okay. And you'd have to later stick it in a hot isostatic press and, and, and compress it, try to get the density down and get it to, to bond. So there's uh, still like sand particles, the particles yeah, are independent. So sintering is, you're raising it, you're raising particles up to a temperature just below melting where they start to connect but not fully melting. Okay. Now, you know, 25 years ago, they started using uh, uh, fiber lasers and when it's, when the laser is melting, it's not only, it, it's not only melting the last layer, but it's remelting two or three layers beneath that as well. Okay, so it's reinforcing everything below. Well. Do, do you have to worry about support for that reason? Yeah. Okay. And so, uh, is there like a shaving process afterwards to remove? When you're done, you have to remove all that support. So a lot of it's done by hand or machining or some other process. And so the supports aren't to the art to hold the part up, but in an FDM printer, but instead they're to give it a place for heat to go. Right. And, well, there's kind of three purposes. They, they give it a place for the heat to go, they, they absorb immediate energy, and they bond it down. So they have to tie it down in any case, uh -huh. curling up. And then in some areas, you have to really bond it down. You have to put extra strong anchors in there. It's interesting. So you have to completely change the way you're thinking in order to design for this process. Yes, you do. Okay. That, that, uh, and you have to design supports, and the design of the supports is almost as important as the design of the part. Because they have to be easy enough to remove that it's not cost effective to make the part. Yeah, and strong enough to hold. So what's the difference between this machine and that machine? Some different brand names. Okay. Same thing. These guys... Same this technology, is, same chamber size or different chamber sizes? This is much larger. Okay. Yeah. This one will do parts that are about 10 inches cubed. Okay. Uh, these guys have been around the longest for metal 3D printing, and they, and every company has a, a, a term they call it, right? Like 
so these guys call it DMLS, Direct Metal Laser Sensor. And that's because they named it 30 years ago. Um, and they kept the name, and it's kind of stuck. And because these guys are really popular, that's a term a lot of people know about. And Concept Laser, the guys that made the other machine over there, they call it Laser Q-Sync. They, they didn't consult with a marketing agency in the U.S. because Laser Cussing never really took off. <laughs> ASTM technical term is powder bed fusion for this particular process. Okay. So that's what I call it. And so the arm that's moving across the chamber there, what is what is that doing? It's putting a new thin layer of powder on. Okay. And then the lasers are coming in. And you said they're not centering. They're welding. Right. right. Is that right? Yeah, it's taking it to a fully welded state. Or a fully melted state. Very high, very fast heating and cooling rates allows them to get some really unique material properties. You can control the grain structure, you can get a unique combination of high strength and high elongation when you tune the parameters. So you can get enhanced structural performance as well. You yeah. ever just sit in here and just watch it? <laughs> it, it doesn't ever get old. It's, it's cool to watch. Well, I don't know how much machine like that costs. I, like, yeah. Can you tell us that? Or? So this is this is like three quarters of a million to get a machine like this. <laughs> the other one's a quarter million, or 300,000. Yeah. And then you have to build a room around it. So it's, there's a, a high barrier to entry to get into this one. Because it's expensive. This is not going to be a consumer good. Uh, at least not the technology we use, the, the fine critical resolution powder bed fusion. Um, there's some other technologies that do metal that will be better for consumer use. Uh, they're much cheaper and you can crank things out faster but not as, not as uh, precise. Okay. Uncle Ralph, thank you for showing us the metal 3D printers and explaining how this process works and also some of the ways that it's useful, some of the ways that it's less useful. If you have ideas for applications that you think are applicable and, and appropriate for this technology, comment below. Thank you very much.